Hello everyone. It seems only a few weeks ago that you arrived for the first time in your engineering college. And now the first mid-semester examinations are already upon you. There was hardly any breathing space in between, hardly any time to settle in. And now you're giving your first mid-semester examinations. So in this situation, as it happens every year, it is possible, very much possible, that the results of the first mid-semester examinations are not going to be that great for many, many students. So it is natural for you to feel quite a bit disappointed after the initial euphoria of joining college has died down uh, at this first results. And uh, you are left feeling with an agonizing uh, feeling of self-doubt. So in this situation, I thought it would be a good idea for me to make a video so that I can give you some tips, um, some discussion on how to overcome this feeling and how to take stock of the situation so that you can perform better subsequently. So the first thing that you have to remember is that no matter how bad it is, it is very much possible for you to make a comeback. I've seen it in a number of cases because I was myself uh, an engineering student uh, once here at IIT Kharagpur, where I'm a faculty now in the mechanical engineering department. So it is very much possible for students to make a comeback. So even if one semester has gone bad, it is very much possible for them to make a comeback in another semester. Now within a semester, suppose the mid semester has gone bad, it is not really necessary for you to feel despondent because there have also been cases where people have not done well in the mid semester and they came back and did much better in their second class test, maybe in the, uh, and also, also in the end semester examinations and overall the results, uh, they, they managed to pull it up. Maybe it was not an ex excellent uh, result, but somehow they managed to salvage it. So you must be prepared to do damage control within a semester. So please do not give up hope. Please do not give up your efforts. This is the first thing. Now, there are two broad categories of things which you have to be mindful about regarding how to handle the academic agonies. Uh, and these tips are as much relevant for first year as it is for the second year and to a certain extent for the senior students also in third and fourth year. So uh, this broad category of things is first of all, there, is, there are a couple of things which uh, it is completely within your power and then there are a few things which are not in your power, but still you can do something about them. So let's discuss the first category. So first thing is that uh, in the initial enthusiasm of joining the college, you perhaps join a lot of societies, get involved in a lot of extracurricular activities. Now, sometimes you overshoot yourself, meaning that you spread yourself too thin and you become way too involved in too many things. There's only so much time there every day. So naturally, the time that you can devote to your studies that suffers consequently your academic performance suffers so what i'm suggesting is that take a long good hard look at yourself at the at the time management capabilities that you possess and then make a very hard decision about dropping some of these activities there is no way that you can manage uh, i mean it is just wishful thinking that if you think that you can manage with the same number of activities and somehow uh, you are able to pull up your academic performance, that is not going to happen. That is just wishful thinking. So try to curtail the number of activities you are involved in. Uh, take a smaller bite okay, and chew them properly and digest them properly, meaning that be involved in limited number of activities, but do them really, really well, including your academic activities. Now, uh, on the other end of the spectrum, there are some students who, um, I mean, take it a little bit too easy. They are not involved in that many extracurricular activities and they are not that much involved in academics also. So basically, uh, they have heard that once you get into a good engineering college, maybe an NIT or IIT, your life is set. And that perhaps gives, I mean, they give themselves the license after joining these colleges of relaxing that is a blunder okay life is said this phrase it does not mean that you can relax you can never relax rather the life is said you have to understand it in the sense that once you come to these great places 
they offer you very many opportunities what life is said is that you can exert your efforts in a very concerted in a very focused way to take the best advantage of this very many opportunities to carve out the career path that you so desire okay this is the real meaning of life is said it is in terms of the opportunities that are available to you and how you can exert your efforts in a focused way not in terms of that you can relax you also have to clearly understand that if it was so very difficult to enter these colleges then how much more effort you have to put in to actually excel at these places so please do not forget this now these are a couple of things which is which are completely in your power okay now as far as things which are not completely in your power but still you can do something about them let's connect with the first with the last thing that i was talking about that uh, comparison uh, between like uh, how difficult it was to enter and the kind of expectations that you should have in college now first and foremost the teaching so many times students feel that they have gone a very rigorous uh, coaching to get into these colleges and perhaps their coaching teachers were very inspirational very good so if uh, to enter these places the teachers were so very good how much much how much better the the teachers will be in the actual colleges and uh, truth be told uh, they are in a in a state of shock when they find that uh, there are quite a few teachers who are not at all good it is really unfortunate but this is the reality in many of these engineering colleges even in the iits that there are teachers who are not at all serious about teaching so this becomes a kind of very uninspired situation for them and they lose and the students lose interest in these subjects now my suggestion is that you have to be a real pro about it you have to be real professional i mean somebody very wise told that the real difference between a professional and an amateur is that a professional doesn't wait for inspiration to strike they just turn up for work and do their work as it is expected of them so in a so take inspiration from this saying okay uh, you you just have to turn up for your work no matter whether the teacher is good or bad you have to do your work and you cannot afford to lose interest in the subject just because the teacher happens to be bad it also uh, means that maybe one or two teachers are bad maybe two or three teachers four teachers are bad maybe there is just one teacher in one subject who is good take a little bit of an inspiration from that okay so you also have to remember that maybe even if the teacher is not good in the sense that he is not able to communicate his things well but often times what happens in that in some of these great institutes uh, the teachers are actually very good researchers they have a lot of knowledge so if you can somehow manage to get across to them communicate with them somehow interact with them maybe on a personal level you will be able to find out that they have a lot of things to offer maybe if you approach them for some project you will actually be able to learn something in a very concrete fashion so this is my advice to you so don't get despondent about it the next thing is that uh, again a comparison between what you uh, faced in your 10 plus 2 during your preparations uh, through your coaching and the kind of things that you face in college is that regarding the structure so back during your coaching you had a lot of structure a lot of rigor uh, and you were completely focused like a single minded focus in your uh, in what you wanted to achieve that is come to the a uh, great engineering college uh, now you still have some structure in an engineering college Uh, there is the structure of the course curriculum there is the rigor and everything but ultimately the onus is on you the responsibility is on you to learn the things on your own to make the best use of whatever teaching is there uh, good or bad as i said and uh, to do the tutorial sheets on your own to turn up for the tests in time to turn up for the labs and uh, in time to to turn in your assignments in time so all of these things you have to take the soul and soul responsibility okay and uh, i mean sure during coaching also you had to take on the responsibility but a massive difference between coaching and your actual engineering college is that in coaching each and every test was no matter how serious it was still like a mock test i mean theoretically it was possible that uh, you you not have perhaps 
uh, aced each and every one of this mock tests but still you just had to perform really well in the final entrance examination to be uh, able to get the admission so there was that mental cushion that uh, that even if all the mock tests were not great i mean there was still the second chance there was still the second the next chance but in an engineering college it is not so it is a semester is filled with subjects and it is filled with tests assignments and exams and each of them counts towards your grade point average so it's a rather perilous situation so if you slip up even a little bit if you lose track even a little bit if you're a little bit careless there it goes so you have to be always on your toes you have to be always always careful so as i said the onus is completely on you however it is not so bad so as i said there is still something in your control and power so you see although it is filled with tests and exams you have to understand uh, that back in your 10 plus 2 the subjects themselves i mean they were limited in number physics chemistry and maths and the level was th there i mean it was just 10 plus 2 level so it was not that difficult in terms of the basic contents what was difficult was how it was i mean how, how the questions were asked in terms of the application of that knowledge of that of those contents on the other hand in an engineering college the content is at a quite a high level because this is not the undergraduate level bachelor's level so it is definitely harder but the the nature of the questions is not that difficult so if you manage to prepare a little bit well if you manage to be a little bit careful you manage to do the tutorial sheets a little bit seriously there is no reason for you to uh, to not do well actually so uh, you just have to put in a little bit of more carefulness and you see that your performance picks up just like that so this is something hopeful that you need to remember the next thing is that, as I've already mentioned, uh, compared to your 10 plus 2, where you only mostly had physics, chemistry, maths, maybe another uh, subject or two for your boards, uh, here in each semester, there is a like an overwhelming number of subjects and the breadth of the subjects is also huge. It is like simply, simply overwhelming and at times agonizing. So what can you do in this situation? And to top it all, uh, the situation is like this, that uh, many of these subjects, they build up on one another. For example, here in mechanical engineering, in which I'm a faculty member, uh, in first year, you have a subject called basic engineering mechanics. Now, basic engineering mechanics, on top of that is built the second year subjects of mechanics of solids and dynamics. And on top of mechanics of solids and dynamics is built the third year subject of design of machine elements. So if you perform uh, not so well in basic engineering mechanics your performance is not that well your preparation is not that well you will have to put all the more effort during your second year subjects of mechanics of solids and dynamics and if you perform not that well and your preparation is not that well you'll have to put in even more effort in design of machine elements so it's like a domino effect but it is not quite hopeless like if you if you manage to perform not so well it is not quite hopeless because you see I mean the same factor that there is such an overwhelming number of subjects means that there are certain subjects in each semester which are connected somewhat but still quite mutually exclusive in terms of their knowledge content so even if you manage to not do well in perhaps one or two subjects it is absolutely possible for you to go ahead and perform excellently absolutely get the highest possible grade in another subject so there are actually streams within each and every department in which you can actually become uh, i mean really proficient even if your performance is not that well in maybe another stream so it is for example in mechanical engineering it is very much possible for you to excel in uh, let's say manufacturing or maybe in thermofluid sciences or maybe in uh, the design side of things uh, to the exclusion of the other two streams so so please keep this in mind so things are not always hopeless uh, many students many junior students they do not realize this they think that if one or two things go wrong it's just gone forever okay so it, it is it is absolutely not like that finally i would like to say that uh, you just have to be on your toes a little bit as i have already said a number of times and uh, you just have to maintain track 
in sync with what the professor is uh, doing in class. Don't fall off the wagon. That's it. Okay, if you can maintain this little discipline of maintaining track with the professor, it will go a long way in improving your performance. And for God's sake, please, please do not feel despondent just because one or two examinations have gone bad. Or even if many of your examinations, the majority of your examinations have gone bad in a particular semester, it does not mean the end of the road for you. There is always the chance of pulling up your overall academic performance, your overall grade point average in a subsequent semester. Okay, so on this hopeful note, I will end this video. I'm sure there are a lot of other points. So please feel free to mention them in the comments and uh, I will just end with a big and hopeful all the very best to all of you. Thank you.